Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Today, we're going to continue our expedition into Emacs. We're going to talk about um, commands, expressions, how you can uh, evaluate them or run them. And we're going to talk about that Emacs file. Um, let's get going. Let's continue from where we stopped in the last episode. We're going to talk about commands. Emacs understands ELISP. Emacs Lisp. It's a dialect of Lisp programming language. When we hit command X in the command name, it will execute a command. For example, let's hit command XPWD, which stands for print working directory. For It just printed the uh, uh, working directory when I hit that. Uh, let's do another command here. Let's just write these two lines of code and I select these and I hit command X indent region and it indents the uh, code. Uh, so command X in that region is uh, for indenting the region. Uh, as you noticed, I did not exactly write the whole thing. I just hit tab. So you can just hit command X and type anything and hit tab and then uh, Emacs will auto complete the command for you. We can also use a command column to evaluate a, a certain statement. When we hit command column, it takes us to a buffer and in that buffer we can write whatever Lisp statement we want to write and it will evaluate it. For example, um, we can use set Q to set a variable value and I just hit command column and I, I type set Q my variable 1, 2, 3 and it, and it set my variable to 1, 2, 3. You can see the output is 1, 2, 3. Uh, we can also use command H, V where we can see the value of a variable. I hit command H, V and I type my var and it said your var's value is 1, 2, 3. So far, we've been using the mini buffer to evaluate the statements, but we can also evaluate them at wherever you type them in the real buffer. So let's just write the statement, set Q your variable 1, 2, 4, and hit Control X, Control E. You can see the output in the mini buffer, 1, 2, 4. Now let's check whether our variable is set to 1, 2, 4. Let's hit uh, Control H, V. It goes into the mini buffer. We type your variable and hit Enter, and voila, it says 1, 2, 4. We could also check the, uh, the values of these variables by typing them at the buffer and then hitting control X, control E, and then we should see their results in the mini buffer. My variable is 1, 2, 3, your variable is 1, 2, 4. Emacs is super versatile, uh, by which we mean is that we can program it to have whatever functionalities we want it to have. Um, Emacs understands Lisp, so we can write these little Lisp programs called packages and we can load them uh, onto Emacs and Emacs will have new abilities because it's programmed to do so. Uh, for example, we can develop a new language that Emacs doesn't know about and we can write a package uh, for color coding it or even to autocomplete this, this language. So then we don't have to upgrade the binary of Emacs. We don't have to change anything about the program. We just download this package and then load it up at the start time. But how do we load it up at the start time? Well, it happens with this magical file called .emacs, which is under your home directory. Uh, these, uh, this file holds all the ELISP commands statements that is run when you start your Emacs. And all the packages goes into .emacs.d directory. And the way we load it up is in our .emacs file, we just write a statement that refers to this package, which is already in .emacs.d directory. And um, this referral will invoke Emacs to load up the package. Um, it's called a require statement. Uh, for example, uh, I already have a package. I've already downloaded a package called autocomplete, which uh, I put under .emacs.d directory. And by adding a line to that Emacs file, we can invoke this, we can load up this package. Let's first test whether uh, we get any autocomplete. We don't get any autocomplete. Um, let's say require autocomplete. I just hit Control X, Control E. Uh, we still don't get any uh, autocomplete. Then I um, type autocomplete mode command, which actually turns on autocomplete. As you see, now I can get the autocomplete. It's just magical. Uh, this is the, what the, uh, autocomplete package gives us uh, just autocomplete for C, C++. Um, and the way I ran these commands, if I just put them into that Emacs file, 
and Emacs will be running them every time it starts. Let's go to our .emacs file. Uh, let's first type in require autocomplete, which will load up the package. Now let's type this command called global autocomplete uh, mode equals to true, which turns autocomplete for every single buffer. Let's save and restart. As you see, yes, autocomplete is on for this buffer. So before we end this episode, let's uh, do one more trick. There's a command called uh, command x go to line. And uh, this helps us to go to any line in, in, the, uh, in our file. So instead of typing this command each time, we can just go to our .emacs file and set a shortcut for this command. And this will uh, make our lives really easy. So let's set a global key for go to line command. Let's first check the key combination that we want to use. Um, I'm going to use Control C J, and it's undefined. I just hit Control C J, and it said it's undefined. So I can just set go to line command to to this key combination. I'm going to type in global set, and as you can see, it's the autocomplete is on, so it's our life is pretty easy. Uh, so we type this KBD as the uh, key binding. Control C J, uh, go to line command. So now let's save our that Emacs file and restart Emacs. Now, uh, when we hit Control C J, as you see, go to line just works. Well, thank you for watching. I have this file as a reference linked under the video. Uh, you have a great day.